The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on policing. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I now call on Michael Matheson. Up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to update Parliament on leadership and performance of policing. When we created Police Scotland in 2013, we purposely strengthened the governance, accountability and scrutiny arrangements for policing and created a clear statutory framework for investigations of misconduct allegations against police officers. There's also a clear and independent process for investigating criminal allegations under the direction of the Lord Advocate. We created the Scottish Police Authority and Police Investigations and Review Commissioner to provide independent investigation and decision-making on misconduct matters. And HMICS provides professional and independent scrutiny of policing, with a statutory duty to support policing to deliver best value and continuous improvement. As you know, an Assistant Chief Constable was suspended last Friday by the Scottish Police Authority. The Scottish Police Authority Board took this decision after the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner brought allegations to its attention. These include criminal matters which the Commissioner had been directed to investigate by the Crown Office. That criminal investigation has commenced and is ongoing. The Scottish Police Authority also referred misconduct allegations about the senior officer to the PIRC and the Commissioner is now establishing whether a misconduct investigation is required. In addition, three other officers were suspended and two placed on restricted duties. Decisions in relation to these other officers were taken by Police Scotland in line with the relevant conduct regulations passed by Parliament. These are live investigations and we must respect the process. Until investigations are complete, further comment or speculation about the individual cases would not be appropriate. I'm also aware of some criticism of the current process. There has been widespread speculation about individuals involved in cases and the nature of the allegations before the process has been concluded. I have considerable sympathy with the view that this is unhelpful. Going forward, it is important to reflect on the operation of these processes, particularly around confidentiality. These events have caused understandable concerns, and I now wish to highlight the measures that are are being put in place to strengthen the senior command team in Police Scotland. Following the recent suspensions, Deputy Chief Constable Designate Ian Livingston acted quickly to review his command structure. In doing so, he stated his confidence in the leadership provided by Police Scotland's officers and staff, reinforcing that leadership exists across all aspects of policing from his role as the Deputy Chief Constable all the way through the organisation to the police constables serving their local communities. I wholeheartedly support that view. His recommendations to strengthen Police Scotland's senior team was approved by the Scottish Police Authority Board yesterday. As a result, two officers will be promoted to temporary Assistant Chief Constable with immediate effect. Gillian MacDonald, and Alan Spears have already passed the UK-wide strategic command course and are ready and fully qualified to step up. Steps have also been taken to ensure the operation of Police Scotland's counter-terrorism and firearms unit are unaffected by recent developments. Operations <laughs> and training continue as normal with experienced officers filling key roles. Some commentators have sought to use the recent events to question Police Scotland's performance. However, the evidence of this is clear. The latest national statistics show that recorded crime is at a 43-year low and public confidence in the police remains strong. All local areas have seen a significant reduction 
in overall recorded crime over the longer term. A number, the number of non-sexual violent crimes recorded has fallen 49% between 2006-07 and 2016-17 and remains at one of its lowest levels since 1974. And cases of homicide have fallen by 47% in the past 10 years. Looking forward, the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland have a clear strategy for the next 10 years with the publication of their Policing 2026 strategy earlier this year. This will ensure Scotland continues to benefit from a modern, responsive and sustainable police service. Then officer, I will now move on to addressing governance and I wish to start by welcoming the appointment of Susan Deacon as the new chair of the Scottish Police Authority. Susan takes up post on the 4th of December, bringing extensive experience of high profile roles in the public and private sector. She will bring a new approach to the governance of policing. Through decades of experience leading change in public, private and academic organisations and her years serving the democratic process of communities as both MSP and Minister, she has a track record of bringing together people and ideas in ways that lead to lasting improvement and change. As she turns the focus of the SPA outwards, she intends to strengthen partnership with COSLA and others, proactively involving them in improvement and change. I also welcome the appointment of Kenneth Hogg as the Interim Chief Officer of the SPA. His background in public service reform, financial accountability and leadership will stand the SPA in good stead. These appointments sit alongside significant improvement in SPA governance over the course of this year and the review I commissioned of the authority's executive function. All will support the board to perform its role effectively. Let me finish, presiding officer, by commending the tireless job police officers and staff do every day to keep Scotland safe and setting out what the Scottish Government is doing to support policing. Andrew MacDonald from the Scottish Police Federation yesterday reinforced that, and I quote, frontline officers are still out there. They've been out there all weekend, still doing their job still going to the calls from the public and out there patrolling to prevent crime. Since Friday, I've met with the SPA, the Deputy Chief Constable Designate, other senior officers in the command team, HM, Chief Inspector of Constabulary. The recurring theme in those conversations is one of strength and continuity in Scottish policing. Derek Penman said earlier today, I agree with the view of the Scottish Police Federation that there is no crisis in policing. Our ongoing scrutiny of Police Scotland has consistently shown that police officers and police staff at all levels remain committed to delivering policing into our communities. As well as the usual local policing activity we see every day in our communities, the next few days we'll see the launch of the drink driving campaign and there is a very visible police presence at our winter festivals. This morning at the Scottish the Police Scotland Violence Prevention Conference, officers from across the country came together <coughs> to focus on police working collaboratively to reduce crime in Scotland. In short, presiding officer, operational policing continues and the public can have confidence in the police service. To support that important work, this government is committed to supporting policing, promising to protect the police resource budget in real terms in every year of this parliament, a boost of £100 million by 2021. I also committed a further £61 million for reform this year. We've lobbied the UK government and VAT over the last five years, and the Chancellor's announcement that Police Scotland will be eligible to reclaim VAT from the 1st of April 2018 is welcome and long overdue. 
the benefits will flow directly to policing as VAT will be reclaimed directly from HMRC. Design officer, the creation of a single service has improved the ability of our police to respond quickly and effectively to serious crime, terrorism and other major incidents, uninhibited by the previous force boundaries. It has delivered a scale of operational flexibility and specialism that was not possible under the legacy arrangements. And it continues to deliver an excellent local service to communities that I believe is the match of policing anywhere in the world. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement, and I can allow no more than 20 minutes for that. Uh, would those who wish to ask a question please press their buttons now? And I call on Liam Kerr. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Can I welcome Deputy Chief Constable Designate Ian Livingstone's appointment of temporary assistant Chief Constables Macdonald and Spears? I'm sure I speak for the whole chamber when I offer my continued support to the Deputy Chief Constable, who is working hard to provide stability during what he describes as difficult days. Deputy Presiding Officer, despite the tireless work of officers and staff on the front line, which I applaud, the public fears the police service is in a critical state and the Cabinet Secretary is refusing to admit it. Even today, he spins the plugging of gaps at the top as strengthening the senior team. He says the force are acting quickly. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to tell us exactly when Police Scotland's leadership will return to normal with no executive posts on leave or temporarily filled? And will he tell the Chamber if he has sought specific reassurances that no major investigations have been adversely affected by this turmoil. And finally, given the circumstances, will he now abandon his ill-thought-out, unwanted and unnecessary British Transport Police merger? Michael Matheson. So, no, officer, um, can I um, say um, to... Liam Kerr, he started off by welcoming the actions which had been taken mm -hmm. by Deputy Chief Constable Designate Ian Livingston in the two temporary ACC appointments that were made yesterday, and then questions whether that strengthens the leadership team within Police Scotland. If the member knew either of these individuals, mm -hmm. he would know that they are both very capable police officers who have gone through the process and have extensive experience in being able to discharge the responsibilities of being an ACC. And I would hope that the member would reflect on the fact that Ian Livingston has made these appointments on the basis of the skill sets which they have. Mm -hmm. To start to question the command structure within Police Scotland further and those individuals who have been appointed to it, I don't think reflect well on the member no, at this doesn't. particular point. Doesn't, doesn't. Can I also turn to the issue which the member has stated in regard to when will it return to normal? I stated in recent days that this is a challenging set of circumstances for the executive team within Police Scotland. No one would wish to be in this particular situation with an officer suspended and a chief constable who's presently on extended leave. But as a member will also recognise, there is now an investigation into all of these incidents. And what we will now have to wait is for that process to be completed. To seek to try and in some way undermine that process by suggesting that it simply can be brushed aside while it's been taken forward would be wholly inappropriate. And what I can also say to the member as well is that within Police Scotland, and I'm sure he does recognise this, is that there are many dedicated, very experienced officers there who are always able to help to support the organisation in particular investigations as and when that is necessary. And that's exactly what Police Scotland will continue to do. And I have got every confidence that Ian Livingston and his command team will continue to take the organisation forward in addressing that. I'm saying, officer, in the final point in relation to BTP, I understand that the member opposes the idea of the integration of BTP into Police Scotland, despite his own party's commitment to abolish BTP mm. altogether. Yeah. But what I've always said, like any other part of policy and government, I keep these matters under regular review. 
and the joint programme board that is made up of experts that are overseeing this particular integration. If they highlight concerns or issues to me, I will duly take those matters into consideration. That was the case before Friday last week and has always been the case and will continue to be the case. But now is the time to get behind our police service, our men and women who are protecting our communities on a DEN, DEN out basis, not to question the suitability of people who have been appointed to key posts in supporting the command structure. Claire Baker. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advance copy of the statement. Nobody is questioning that our dedicated police officers and support staff are working every day to keep our communities safe. But there is no denying that this has been a bad year for leadership and governance at Police Scotland and the SPA, full of suspensions, resignations and early exits. Given the past few days, this statement looks complacent. The Cabinet Secretary must take responsibility for what happens on his watch and there are legitimate concerns. Many are wondering why the Chief Constable has been granted special leave while other officers who have dedicated their whole careers to policing in Scotland are receiving suspensions. The Chief Constable has now been absent for almost three months. What guarantees can the Cabinet Secretary give that PERC, who are in an unprecedented situation investigating several senior officers, have the capacity to resolve this so that we can get Police Scotland to a more stable situation? Michael Matheson. So, an officer, the member raises an important issue about the capacity of PERC to deal, PERC to deal with a number of these different types of investigations, including the investigation into uh, the uh, complaints which have been made against the uh, Chief uh, Constable. As the member will be aware, we've actually increased the resource base to PERC to support it and been able to actually undertake some of the very detailed investigations which are required. Uh, PERC don't only undertake investigations in relation to uh, complaints which they receive directly themselves, uh, they also have to uh, be directed by the Crown Office when they're conducting criminal-based investigations uh, and in that sense op almost operate as the police force uh, for the Crown Office in investigating these types of complaints. And I recognise the challenges and the demands which are placed upon them in looking at these matters and we are presently considering the existing resources which are available to the PERC. It's in everybody's interest for these types of complaints and investigations to be completed as quickly as possible. But what I also say to the member in relation to her comments that she believes that this statement reflects some form of complacency. I take my responsibilities as Cabinet Secretary for Justice very seriously. And what I set out here today are a range of measures that have been taken forward by Police Scotland, that have been taken forward by the SPA in making sure that we address these issues as effectively as we can, and also by making sure we make additional investment available to Police Scotland. And I'll continue to make sure that we do everything we can to support the men and women who keep our communities safe day in, day out. And while she may choose to sit from the sideline, carping and making political comments, I'll go on with the day job of supporting our police force here in Scotland. Business time this afternoon is extremely tight and there is no spare time at all. So can I have short questions and shorter answers, please? Cabinet Secretary. And I call Stuart Stevenson, followed by Margaret Mitchell. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the great strength of Police Scotland, together with its predecessors, is its ability to operate as a team within a framework of laws, grow new senior officers, and do so without hands-on interference from politicians? Michael Matheson. Oh, Signal Officer, I've got, um, through uh, recent years, I've been able to meet with a whole range of officers right across the organisations, uh, from local policing through to uh, special units. And there's one thing that is very clear to me is that one of the real benefits of having a national force is the ability to be able to flex specialist support as and when it is necessary and to make sure that they can utilise all of the skill sets that are based within the organisation at appropriate times to address any particular investigations as and when they occur. So I believe that Police Scotland has a very rich team of leadership uh, within its organisation. As DCC uh, designate Ian Livingston said recently uh, that he believes they have got strong leadership from the top right through to uh, local uh, policing. And I believe that is the case and it's what we should all be looking to support. Margaret Mitchell, followed by Rona Mackay. The Presiding Officer, the Cabinet Secretary asserts that in the creation of the single force, the governance, accountability and scrutiny arrangements for policing in Scotland were strengthened. 
but the lack of checks and balances expressed at the time uh, continue to persist. I ask him again, therefore, will he now confirm that the Scottish Government will revisit the 2012 Act specifically to look at the methods of holding Police Scotland and the SBA to account? And will he confirm exactly what he does as Cabinet Secretary to ensure the accountability and transparency is evident in practice and not just theory? Michael Matheson. Signing officer, the member uh, asked me this question a few weeks ago and the answer is the same. We have no plans to revisit the Act at the present moment. Rona Mackay, followed by Mary Fee. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with the Scottish Police Federation that, quote, there is a lot of media speculation and hype and perhaps some political people getting involved in this, but there is no crisis. It is business as usual. Michael Matheson. Uh, I think it is important that there is robust, effective scrutiny of our uh, police service and that we have a, uh, an independent complaints process that allows those issues to be appropriately investigated as and when uh, complaints are brought forward. And that's what we have in the uh, Police Investigation and Review uh, Commissioner. And of course, where there are uh, criminal matters that these relate to, that these issues are directed by uh, the Crown Office. But I do recognise the concerns which have been raised by uh, the Scottish Police Federation around speculation relating to these particular uh, complaints. But what we need to do is now to make sure that that due process, that the natural justice that's due uh, in dealing with these uh, particular complaints is allowed to take its course. Uh, and I think it's in everyone's interest to ensure that we uh, reflect on that uh, before making comment regarding some of the nature of the complaints. Mary Fee, followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the advance sight of his um, statement. With officers at the top of Police Scotland having been suspended, placed on restricted duties, and the Chief Constable on special leave, can the Justice Secretary explain what impact the disarray in the command structure will have on the merger with the British Transport Police, which has already had questions asked around its finance? Michael Matheson. Well, President Officer, if the member actually took the opportunity to engage with the command structure within Police Scotland, she would be reassured that there is no disarray within the command structure. Uh, the actions which have been taken by the Deputy Chief Constable-designate um, over the course of the last 24 hours, having reviewed his command structure over the course of the weekend uh, and the decision to temporarily appoint uh, two uh, assistant uh, chief constables is to help to support and strengthen uh, the command structure as it stands at the present moment. He's also set out the slight difference that he's creating for both of these roles in order to strengthen uh, some aspects of what he believes uh, are areas which could be improved within the command structure um, overall. What I uh, will say to the member in regard to BTP, and again, I recognise the member's opposition uh, to the integration of BTP within uh, Police Scotland. It is the exact same as I said to, uh, to Liam MacArthur. I keep all areas of policy under constant review. And where the, uh, the, uh, where the Joint Programme Board, which the Scottish Government are on, uh, the SPA, Police Scotland and others are all on, including the UK Government, if there are issues of concern which are raised in regard to the integration, how that's been taken forward, then I will give them due consideration. Um, it's in no one's interest to compromise operational aspects of how policing is delivered uh, going forward uh, post the integration of these services. And that was always the case and that will continue to be the case uh, going forward. But I want to reassure the member, despite our difference in views on this matter, is that I do constantly give these issues consideration. And if there were concerns and issues being raised with me, I would consider those issues very seriously and in a considered way. John Finney, followed by Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of his statement. I particularly thank him for mentioning the outstanding results last week from the Scottish Police Service. This in the face of, of all the events that are going, and it shows the dedication from the uh, officers, both me, uh, women and men. Uh, there's a shadow being cast, and it's been cast by two individuals, lame ducks, Andrew Flanagan, the chair of the police authority, who is going, his mate, Paul Gormley, who should be suspended and should go, in my opinion. Um, but we must look to the future, Cabinet Secretary, and it's important to assure there's proportionality and equality. Could you in come to your question, yes, please, indeed, Mr. Finney. In the decision making around suspension between the Police Authority and Police Scotland, what will you do to ensure that that happens, please? Michael uh, Matheson. General Officer, I think we have to recognise there's due process being carried out at the present moment regarding the complaints which are. Uh, being considered, but I uh, did mention in my statement the need to uh, reflect on aspects relating to uh, confidentiality. Um, and I'm, uh, I've always been of the view that at no point should we accept that where we are at the present moment is a, a, a point where we can't make further improvements in the future. 
Uh, and as is the case with any type of uh, process that's been taken forward with any area within public policy, we should always reflect back on whether there are ways in which the system could be used, made to work better and improved in some way uh, in the future. And there's no doubt when it comes to issues, uh, whether it be complaints, uh, conduct issues, other aspects of policing uh, in general uh, and how it deals and responds to uh, local incidents, we should always do that in reflecting on how we can improve our response to these matters. And I've got no doubt that uh, the whole issue of how uh, complaints are handled, etc., in the future is a matter which will be given uh, due consideration. But we also have to recognise, though, uh, there's due process being gone through with the existing complaints and that uh, we need to make sure we protect the integrity of that process. Uh, for both the purpose of the investigation itself, but also the parties who've had complaints uh, lodged against them uh, to ensure uh, that they are given uh, natural justice and how this issue, uh, how these matters are taken forward. Fulton McGregor, followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, President Officer. What discussions has the Cabinet Secretary had with the UK Government regarding the repayment of the £140 million that has been taken out of the pockets of our emergency services in VAT over the last few years? Michael Matheson. Uh, officer, although I welcome the decision by the, uh, the Chancellor uh, last week after our sustained pressure to change the VAT rules, and they've eventually conceded that they could have always changed the VAT rules, uh, that money from reclaiming VAT will now go back directly into the police service and also into the Scottish uh, Fire and Rescue Service. No doubt there is the outstanding £140 million, uh, which will be £175 million by the end of this parliamentary year, uh, which we believe uh, that the Treasury uh, are treating almost as a windfall, but it's a windfall out of the pockets of our emergency services, which would be better invested in our emergency services here in Scotland. Willie Rennie, followed by Ben McPherson. Uh, does the Justice Secretary agree with Kenny McCaskill that today's problems in Police Scotland are someone else's fault, or with SNP backbenchers that there's nothing to see here? Is it not the case that all of this can be traced right back to the decision to rush through centralisation, to create a toothless police authority, to break local community links, to appoint the first chief constable who undermined traditional Scottish policing. Does the, Scottish, does the Justice Secretary accept responsibility for any of that? Michael Matheson. Officer, I, I do recognise I do recognise that there have been significant challenges since the creation of Police Scotland. There's a number of areas which the organisation um, has not performed as well as we would have wished to, uh, which is a when you consider a major part of public sector reform. Uh, for example, there is uh, clearly areas around call handling, uh, where the way in which that was taken forward by the service, uh, they now acknowledge that uh, and recognise that. And the work that I commissioned through HMICS to review the way in which you were conducting uh, call handling, an issue which I know the member pursued um, on a number of occasions, uh, identified areas where they could have taken action. However, the work that I commissioned through directing HMICS to review call handling has led to improvements. Uh, and of the 30 recommendations that were made in the report that was published by HMICS at the beginning of uh, this year, it demonstrated the improvements and the progress that Police Scotland are making on this. Another area where I believe that the uh, way in which we uh, took forward the integration of uh, the eight forces, it did result in aspects of local policing not being given the priority uh, that it should have been given. And one of the things that I took forward as Justice Secretary with the SPA was to make sure there was a much clearer focus on the need to have local policing given a much more central focus on how policing is delivered in Scotland. So when we published the new uh, national uh, policing priorities, at its very heart was the whole issue of localism. And one of the aspects that is set out again within the Policing 2026 strategy is a need to make sure that we are reflecting the way in which policing is delivered at a local level uh, as to what is local need. So I fully accept the points that have been made by, uh, by uh, Willie Rennie, that there have been challenges and that there have been issues in taking forward the integration of our uh, police services. But I also recognise that there have been real benefits in the operational ability of the organisation and being able to respond to major incidents, supporting local policing issues through national support being provided to them as well, has been extremely beneficial at the same uh, time. Is there more to do? Absolutely, there is more to do. And I can assure the member, myself, the SPA and the incoming chair, uh, and Ian Livingston, while he is presently leading the organisation, are all committed to making sure we do everything possible to drive the organisation organisation forward and to address these issues and to ensure that, that policing in our communities reflects the needs of our local communities. 
A very quick question, please, Mr McPherson. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary please reassure constituents at this time about Police Scotland's calibre of performance and that day-to-day -day policing will not be affected by the investigations into senior officers? Michael Matheson. So, officer, I uh, set out my statement in the way in which uh, Police Scotland and the recent performance data demonstrates the significant progress they are still making in improving how they uh, tackle crime and reduce crime and prevent it from occurring within our own communities uh, on an ongoing basis. And the comments that have been made by others in the Scottish Police Federation, including the comments that were issued today by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Constabulary, uh, Derek Penman, uh, again uh, providing clear assurances around how operational policing is continued to be delivered on an ongoing basis and to an extremely good standard. And this morning I was at the Police Scotland Scottish Government uh, Violence Prevention Conference in Glasgow where there were operational police officers from right across uh, the country sharing good practice on how we can more effectively tackle aspects of uh, violence in our communities, particularly those communities that continue uh, to suffer disproportionately from it or more deprived uh, communities. And that nature of operational policing will continue and as Ian Livingston said out yesterday at the SPA board, uh, the public can be assured that that will continue to be the priority as the organisation moves forward in the weeks and months ahead. Final question quickly please, Maurice Corey. <coughs> Thank you uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. We understand that some of the allegations involve illegal use of firearms. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what measures are currently in place to ensure firearms are only available for use by authorised officers and what further measures are being considered in light of this scandal? Michael Matheson. Uh, the member will be aware that this is a live criminal investigation uh, into these matters and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to start to getting into the details of the particular investigations which are being directed by the Crown into these issues. No doubt though, once that investigation has been completed and we know the outcome of it, we'll be able to identify the reasons as to how this has come about in the first place and what measures then need to be put in place to prevent it from potentially occurring in the future if it has happened, because there are allegations at this particular point. So I can assure the member, uh, when these investigations are completed, and if there are lessons that need to be learned and actions that need to be taken, that they will be taken once that investigation is being completed. That concludes the statement on policing, and we move on to the next item of business. Apologies to Ms McAlpin that I wasn't able to call.